What's up guys, my name is Calvin Wiley and welcome to my YouTube channel. Have you ever been interested in keeping a mantis as a pet, particularly a baby mantis? In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how to care for a mantis in the most simplest and easiest way possible. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, let's get started. So right here, I have the male and female ghost mantis nymphs that I unboxed in my second unboxing video. If you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you go and check it out. But for the start of the video, I'm just going to be feeding the mantises just so they are preoccupied with something. So right here is a pre-killed mealworm that I just cut in half and the male just got fed and now it's time to feed the female. There we go. Now, I'm going to try to make this video as super simple and as easy as possible. And the reason for that is because it should not be complicated. Mantises, in my opinion, are some of the easiest insects to care for, depending on the species you have. The majority of them are incredibly easy to care for, uh, especially ghost mantises, Phylocrania paradoxa. Oh, the female just dropped hers. Let me pick it up for her really quick. There we go. All right, so the first thing that I wanna get into is what type of enclosure you should be housing your mantis nymph in. Now, I'm only gonna be speaking from personal experience and what I feel works best for me. When it comes to keeping mantis nymphs, you may be thinking that something like this is not ideal because it looks very bland, very small, very empty. And the truth of the matter is that sometimes less is always better. Housing a mantis nymph and as it progresses throughout its life, keeping it in something like this, in my opinion, is ideal. Now, it shouldn't be in this enclosure for its entire life. So if you're not familiar with how insects or just all arthropods in general grow, they grow by shedding their exoskeleton through a process called molting. And so as they molt, they will grow large and larger and larger until they reach sexual maturity or adulthood. And so as this mantis grows, and especially this one too, the female, because she'll be a bit bigger than the male, you want to gradually increase the size of the enclosure. So this is like a small little deli cup, like a, like a sauce cup almost. Um, you want to increase it as it grows larger. So, you know, within two molts from now, it'll be much larger than it is currently. And so you're gonna want to get an enclosure that may be twice the size of this and so on and so forth. So as it continues to grow, so will the enclosure. And so then let me put this up so you can see it better. I usually house adult mantis nymphs in something like this. So this is a 32 ounce container. And as you can see, it is ventilated at the top. It has like a kind of like a metal mesh on it. This is to allow airflow to go in and out of the enclosure. And it is also for aiding the mantis and gripping better when it's hanging upside down. This is something you can actually make. You just get a plastic container, cut a circle around the lid and then using uh, some mesh, something that you would see on like a screen door or like behind a window, something like that. Uh, you would just get some like a hot glue gun and just glue it and place on top. I personally didn't make this one, but you can buy them online. They usually come in a pack and they're pretty inexpensive. But this is something that I personally use when housing adult mantises. And you don't have to house an adult mantis in a 32 ounce container. I personally do and so do a lot of other mantis owners and the reason for that is because we usually have a lot of mantises at a time and it's very hard and troublesome to house each of your adult mantises in something huge and elaborate. You know, something like this will get the job done. But like I said, you don't have to opt for this. You can use something else. Hey guys, I just want to make you all aware of some new products that I've added to my website. First are the t-shirts. I have them available in two different designs, the Southern Black Widow and also the Earthworm. 
These shirts are unisex and range in sizes small to extra large and will come in three different colorways, black, white, and gray. They're available for pre-order and will be shipped February 15th. Another cool thing added to my website are a limited collection of framed arthropods. These arthropods have all died from natural causes, mostly due to old age, and have been personally pinned and framed by me. One of my most popular stickers, the European Hornet, I now converted into a keychain. For those of you who are into keychains, I have for sale, only available on one option, the European Hornet. Lastly, the stickers that most of you are familiar with are still up for sale on my website. So head on over to my website to see what you like. And as always, thank you so much for supporting my small business. Now you might have noticed the paper towel on the underside of the lid. This pretty much mimics the mesh that's on the 32 ounce container. It just kind of helps them in aiding for better gripping. Uh, but Mantis's molt upside down. And so as you can see, I mean, they can grip pretty well on the plastic as well. They don't necessarily need this, but it is a good, um, you know, benefit for them in, in case they do slip on the plastic. This is better for their feet to grip on. Now, when it comes to the base of the enclosure, you might be thinking, you know, this needs some substrate. Personally, I rarely ever use substrate for a mantis unless it is a species that needs higher humidity, in which case I will spray the bottom of the substrate to retain more humidity. But for the majority of the species, honestly, that in my personal opinion, there's no really need for substrate. Sometimes people will place a paper towel and line it at the base of the enclosure and they'll moisten the paper towel by spraying it. The only problem with that is that it usually creates mold. This is due from the mantis eating and then food particles, food pieces will fall at the bottom and then mixing with the moisture of the paper towel, it will cause mold to grow and then you end up having to kind of replace the paper towel every so often. So, you know, you can use like a peat moss or coconut fiber, you know, moisten it by spraying it with water. Now let's talk about food and how to feed your mantis nymph. So when it comes to feeding your mantis nymph, especially if they are newborns and fresh, freshly hatched out of their egg sac, they are going to require fruit flies for their first few meals. And so fruit flies is something that you can buy online. They are super easy to breed. I mean, I don't have a video on how to breed fruit flies, but you can find many videos and articles online on how to do it. It's super simple and easy. They are honestly the easiest insect to breed in my opinion. Um, you can't go wrong with that. Now, just like the size of the enclosure increases with the size of your mantis as it molts, so does their food. And so, as you can see, this female ghost mantis is feeding on one half of the mealworm and the male is feeding on the other half. I would have never given them a full-size mealworm. That just would have been way too big for them. And so I cut it in half. And so this is something that you can do. You can pre-kill food. Uh, I know technically the mealworm is still alive. I mean, it, you see it moving a little bit, but you can pre-kill food. For example, you can uh, cut pieces of a cricket or a cockroach or a mealworm or whatever. And if it's too big, like I said, just cut it and give your mantis nymphs uh, bits and pieces of it and they will happily feed on it. Now, you may be thinking mantises need food that is moving around you know, in order to catch. And yes, that is true, but they also will feed on food if they get a taste of it. And what I mean is at the start of the video, when you saw me feed the mealworms to the mantis nymphs, you pretty much take uh, a part of the insect or whatever you're feeding to them. And whatever part is exposed, like the meaty fleshy parts, you want to place in front of their mouths. You basically want to place it on their mouths and their mouth parts will get a taste of the food that's presented in front of them. And they, if they are hungry, they will happily grab and begin feeding on the insects. So it's not something that you have to place inside after you break apart or, you know, whatever, and, you know, see it run around because usually it's, it's not able to, if you break the, the body in half. And so what you have to do is just kind of help them, just place it right in front of their mouths and let them get a taste of it. And they will, if they are hungry, will grab and begin feeding on whatever you give them. 
Now you may be wondering, how often should you be feeding your mantis nymph? And so it's kind of like if you keep tarantulas or any other type of spider, just look at their abdomen. And so their abdomen, which is this back part right here, the third segment of its body, it's going to increase as it eats. And so as this male ghost mantis nymph feeds on this mealworm, it's belly <laughs> is going to increase you know just like humans uh and it'll become very full and will not be interested in feeding for a few days and within those few days it's eventually going to decrease in size and that's how you will know it's time to feed your mantis so their abdomens will be the indicator on whether or not you should feed them and so you don't want to you know overdo it where you fatten them up you can but they will be very heavy and very slow so just give them enough food that is not too much and obviously you do not want to you know wait until their abdomens are super flat because they will become you know em emaciated and you don't want to do that they are on the verge of starvation basically now when it comes to giving water to your mantas it's as simple as getting a spray bottle, filling it up with filtered water, and just spraying the enclosures down. Try not to spray directly on your mantis nymph. Uh, I mean, you, you can if it's a light spray, but just don't try to have a direct uh, beam of water spraying at them. Just spray the sides of the enclosure and your mantis nymph will lap up the little droplets of water and that is how they will drink. So I just noticed that the male dropped the mealworm. I'm not sure if it's full, but you know, if your mantis nymph ever drops your food and if you're able to help them, you can. So let's see, I'm gonna pick the mealworm up and I'm just gonna place it in front of its mouth again. And let's see if it'll eat, watch this. getting a taste of it and as you can see it's not hungry it looks like yeah so he's done he's done that was enough for him so like i said it's, that's why i didn't give him a full one because he would not have been able to eat all that and so his abdomen is nice and full now he has a belly full of food the female's still going at it though, look at her. Now, if you have mantises that have just freshly hatched out of their Uthika or egg sac, you can house them in something like a mesh cubed enclosure uh, where they can actually live for about two to three molts, depending, depending on the species. Um, and then you'll have to remove them after several molts because you may already know, but mantises are highly cannibalistic. And so if you keep them in the enclosure for too long together, uh, especially when they are much larger than they previously were after they hatched out, then they will most likely begin to feed on each other. And so it's wise to only keep mantis nymphs together when they are newborns, but then after about two to three molts, you want to separate them. Also too, if you're keeping them in a mesh enclosure, you can just douse the whole enclosure with fruit flies and the mantis nymphs will begin to feed on them. You can also place something like um, Excelsior in the enclosure. Uh, I'll put up a picture of what that is. If you're familiar with keeping fruit flies, then you probably already know what Excelsior is, but keeping Excelsior in a mesh cubed enclosure with a whole bunch of newborn mantis nymphs, uh, that allows them to be able to walk on stuff and be able to hang upside down and molt and just gives them a place uh, for you know footing basically. So they're not just mindlessly crawling on the sides and underside of the meshed enclosure the excelsior will allow them to be able to grip and walk on things if that makes sense <laughs>
Well, that is going to conclude today's video. If there's anything I missed on the care or just anything in regards to mantises and you know something that you would have wanted me to talk about that I didn't cover in this video, just let me know in the comments and I will try to do my best to answer your question. If you enjoyed the video, however, if you could please leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications. That way you're alerted every time that I post a new video. Follow me on Instagram at Kelvin Wiley and also on TikTok at Kelvin underscore Wiley. Check out my website, kelvinwiley.net, and I will see you guys in the next video.